We're Jerry and Diana. For the 4th of July weekend, we truck camped in the Olympic National Park in Washington State. We went up to Hurricane Ridge and had a beautiful drive in the mountains and forest until the truck broke down. I, however, was terrified. So sometimes things go wrong in little bits and pieces, and sometimes they go wrong all at once. It started small. It's so stupid, I don't even want to tell it, but I'll tell it anyway. Uh, Diana needed beans. I decided that I had to heat her up some beans on the back of the truck. I'm heating up a can of beans at 7,000 feet. Well, we're... Oh yeah, there's a deer right there. Hi, deer. I got hungry and we have all the food in the truck so I just thought it'd be nice to make some beans and there's a deer on cue that came out of the woods. I think they're a breed of deer you call parking lot deer. They seem to like the parking lot. So we have our Coleman stove out and a little pot that's got a removable handle. This container for all of the utensils so we just pulled that out we've got a couple bags of chips drinking some water when we're up at i think it's called obstruction point so we'd driven eight miles down this really steep dirt road in uh, the national park olympic national park got to the end of the road which is a trailhead and we heated up the beans but the camp table is at camp so we needed to be able to sit on the tailgate as we are right now. And I decided, well, I'll move the stove. And I mindlessly started to disassemble the stove that I had just turned off and I grabbed the grate. Funny thing, the grate was hot, like somebody had just heated beans up. That would be me. And so my hands burned. And we started heading back. Now the road to obstruction point, it's like eight miles long, but you have to go at like Eight miles an hour so it takes about an hour to get back well, you can go faster but it's it's a dirt road it's got rocks and potholes and and it's beautiful so we're not going that fast yeah we were slowing down there were animals and so we were watching the deer and then we saw what what were those an olympic marmot olympic marmots so we saw olympic marmots and so that was exciting so the drive back was cool the views Jerry couldn't see him as well on his side of the car for the drive up, so he could really see on the way back. So that was really cool, and we made it about seven out of the eight miles. Yeah, we were almost out when yeah. my notice my ABS light was on. I'd been feeling some vibration in the driver's side front brake, and the truck's really loaded down, and it's super steep where we're driving at in the Olympic. I didn't think much of it, but when I got the ABS light, I'm like, oh, well, maybe all this braking it's heating up or something i'm not familiar enough with abs systems to know what would cause the light to blink off anyway so i pulled over for some reason i was going to start the car again i can't remember what the deal was no good it's not going to start click 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 i'm like oh evidently the abs light will come on when the alternator stops charging and you run your battery completely dead it doesn't like low voltage and you get i don't know if that's a thing but that's what we got so we're at 5,000 feet over a mile away from the visitor center and no cars and it's no getting, one's and passing us oh dark. and it's getting dark why not of course it's getting dark yeah so i thought well battery terminals are a little dirty i'll try that of course i didn't do a thing alternator's dead car won't start but i bought one of those lithium battery powered jump starter module thing pull that out and the truck started but there was no charging happen that alternator was dead so now i know oh i'm driving on the battery that's already depleted because it won't start and i'm almost out so my race is to just get off the road and we did make it up off of the uh, obstruction point road, the road there, got into the visitor center parking lot, did a U-turn because you can't, it's so sharp to get onto it, you can't just pull out. So, And then we started down the hill and it died. By died, he means there was nothing, like the engine died. 
Yeah, well, the the battery voltage because the the the, car, the truck is running on the battery with no alternator power, so we're really just running the juice out of the battery, and it ran it so low that it would no longer function. Probably the either the CPU, the control computer, or the fuel injection, or whatever it was that needed that voltage. It didn't have enough, didn't have enough power, and it died. So the car died. I got no power brakes, got no power steering, and I'm on Hurricane Ridge Road at the very top. So yeehaw, soapbox derby time. So we're 5,000 feet up, what, 16 miles from town, yep. right? And it is a twisty mountain highway, and we have no power, no power steering, no power brakes, no ABS brakes, no gauges. So we didn't even know how fast we were going. Oh, and no headlights, and it's starting to get dark. It's, it did stop a couple times, and he was able to use that battery pack thing. Yep. again to restart it and i got about 30 seconds of drive time before the voltage got too low again and the truck would turn off but it got launched me enough that i got to the downhill and we were able to get all the way down into port angeles coasting he was like oh uh we'll pull over at a church or something and i was like okay well there's a church yeah <laughs> at that point i'm going fairly fast with no power brake, no power steering, and fortunately there was no traffic, and I just swung into this church parking lot and made a left and uh, coasted it perfectly into a parking spot. I think Jerry said, well, do you want to go to Jack in the Box? And I said, I want to stay in the motel. And he's like, where's the motel? And I was like, 381 feet away. <laughs> yep. So we went and got Jack in a Box, used the bathroom, Walked over to the hotel, um, funky, older, you know, highway, 1950s hotel, and uh, got her a room for 120 bucks, I think it was. And it was, it was an unusual room, but it had a full kitchen and a bathroom and giant TV in this little room. And I've and, showered. And Wi-Fi. And, yeah. He wrote a long note explaining what happened and that he'd take care of it right away in case someone from the church showed up and was wondering why there was someone overlanding in their church parking lot. We slept in the motel and Jerry got up super duper early. So my plan was walk to the auto parts store, which is about a mile away, and get an alternator walk back and replace it and you know if my expert troubleshooting was correct we would have a running vehicle and i could drive back over to the auto parts store and exchange the uh, old cord for the core charge but anyway but i realized like my battery's dead i'm not gonna be able to start it i've got my little jump start battery thing but i didn't bring it with me to charge so i ran over there early in the morning like at five you know, the sun was just starting to come up and uh, grabbed the battery and brought it back to the hotel room and plugged it in to charge it and then at 10 to 7 i put my backpack on with the charged up little battery jumper and walked to o'reilly auto parts a mile away got an alternator walked back to the truck Change the alternator in the parking lot. Nobody bothered me. I think the pastor walked by after I finished. I think he was a pastor, but he didn't say, nobody said anything, nobody cared. Got the truck running, drove back up to the auto parts store, pulled my battery out because I did, well, now I'm not gonna trust that battery. I've run it down so much. So I pulled the battery, walked in with the old alternator and the battery in my arms and got a new battery, got my core charge back, put the new battery in, came back. Your alternator and your battery are kind of like salt and pepper. Most of the time you need to keep them together. And if one goes bad, you got to replace the other one, but not always. But no. a lot of times if the alternator is gone, it did, yeah. did some damage to your battery. Flooded, flooded lead acid batteries don't like being deeply discharged. It's not a deep cycle battery. They're for start, they're primarily lots of cranking amps for charging your car. And so I depleted it quite a bit. And it's not a new battery, but it's not, you know, 
without this incident, it would have lasted a couple more years, but no thanks. We didn't talk about um, what it felt like to be driving down a mountain road for 15 miles, sometimes at 2 miles an hour, sometimes at 50, um, with no brakes, power brakes and no power steering. He was laughing. I, however, was terrified in the true sense of the word, like if something were to terrify you, not like going to a movie and, oh, there's a scary part or a jump scare in a YouTube video. Like, I was terrified, and he was not reassuring. Like, I'd be like, are we going to make it? And his answers would be like, well, I'm trying. Or, or do you have no brakes? And he's like, well, not much. And so... No, I had brakes. I just don't have power brakes. So in an emergency situation, I'd have to double foot it, you know, like I'm doing a leg press to, to get really good brake action but every time I asked him a question the answer was more terrifying so I stopped asking questions I did not film I was too scared when we got to the church parking lot I was shaking and he's like oh look this up on your phone and I'm like don't you have a phone it was all they could do to not you know get out of the truck and kiss the pavement to be on solid ground again we were running lights running stop signs anything to keep the car going Right, at a rapid coasting pace. You didn't even get close to dying. I thought I was going to die. Even close. And no one knew where we were and there was no cell service. That, that's, where I, that's where I trust God. I don't worry about the big stuff generally. I do better. Well, I was praying. I was like, dear God, please let us make it down this hill alive. Please let us make it down this mountain alive. Please. He not only got us down the hill alive, he got us to a church parking lot perfectly placed.